The previous video on useful attachments for a digital multimeter was well received by many and you wanted a continuation of this series. I am happy to welcome everyone to the channel. Make yourselves comfortable. Useful attachments for the multimeter. Second episode. Perhaps for many. Such attachments might seem like trinkets, as China offers us multifunctional devices that can do almost everything. And digital multimeters are being enhanced with new features every day for all occasions. But sometimes an additional attachment can do what even the super popular transistor tester cannot. Such attachments allow expanding the capabilities of budget devices. And not only that, without significant costs and modifications to the multimeter itself. So, the first attachment we'll talk about today is the coil inductance meter. The measurement range is from a few microhenries to one millihenry. To be fair, it should be noted that the error increases sharply when measuring inductance above 500 microhenries. The schematic is circulating on the internet, but finding the original source is not that easy. It turned out that the schematic was published in the magazine Radio Mir, issue 5, 2013. You will find the details in the description under the video. I translated the schematic to an imported component base, and for convenience, we will be looking at that version. After burning out half of the schematic due to incorrect power polarity, I decided to add a rectifier diode at the input, which will prevent the schematic from failing if you accidentally reverse the polarity of the power source connection. A pulse generator is assembled on the NE555 timer. The timer output is supplemented with an emitter follower based on a complementary pair of low power transistors for the correct operation of the circuit with low inductance chokes. The circuit is calibrated by rotating the trimmer resistor. For more precise tuning, I recommend using a multi-turn resistor. All that was left for me was to design a compact printed circuit board, assemble it, and test it. You can find the link to the board in the description. An external power source is needed for the device to work. 9 volts, give or take. It's convenient to use 6F22 standard batteries. To minimize the influence of the supply voltage, the circuit is powered by a regulator. 5 volts. Our meter doesn't boast high accuracy and the DT830. Even less so. Especially when measuring small voltages up to 200 MV. Therefore, we will use a much more accurate multimeter from RS. I've had the multimeter for a short time, but I've grown to like it. It is fully waterproof and measures any signal accurately. Let's return to our circuit. How do we set it up? First, we need to find a coil with a known inductance. It's convenient to use coils with color coding for these purposes. In my case, the inductance. The choke is 60 microhenries. Connect everything according to the circuit. Turn the trimmer resistor until you see a value of 60 MV on the multimeter screen. This completes the calibration. And finally, some tests. Naturally, such a meter is not highly accurate. In the case of large inductances, the error increases significantly. Otherwise, it correctly measures inductance from 1 microhenry to millihenries. Beyond that, the variation is quite noticeable. The attachment is quite decent and has a right to exist. The second scheme is no less useful. It allows for the measurement of low ohm resistors. We all know very well that even good professional multimeters are not capable of measuring resistance below a few hundreds of milliohms. But in amateur radio practice, there is often a need to select low ohm resistors or shunts, which are used as current sensors in various circuits. The presented scheme theoretically allows for the measurement of resistance from practically one milliohm. It is extremely simple and is built on the basis of the LM317 integrated circuit. 
The chip is an adjustable voltage and current regulator operating in linear mode. In our case, the chip functions as a current regulator. For the device to work accurately, the resistance of the current setting resistor needs to be selected, so that the output current is exactly 100 mA. However, selecting high-precision resistors of the required resistance is not an easy task. Therefore, they can be connected in series or in parallel to achieve the desired resistance. I did exactly that. On our website, VIP Schema, an online calculator is available for calculating the current setting resistor. From the calculation, it becomes clear that a resistor with a certain resistance in ohms is needed. In my case, there is a slight deviation, but it is acceptable. By the way, the task of finding a resistor can be simplified by using an adjustable multi-turn resistor. By rotating it, we actually achieve the desired output current. To set up the circuit, you just need to connect an ammeter to the output of the stabilizer and set the output current to 100 mA. Voltage Current and resistance are closely interconnected. This was proven and demonstrated by Grandpa Ohm. When a low resistance resistor is connected to the output of the circuit, a voltage drop occurs across it. The multimeter itself will simply show this drop in millivolts. The output current from the stabilizer is 100 mA. Therefore, 10 MV on the multimeter display will mean that the resistance of the test resistor is 100 M omega, or ohms. This meter is capable of measuring resistance from 0.001 ohms. But if you find a multimeter that can accurately measure microvolts, then you will have the opportunity to measure even lower resistances. I think it's clear that this adapter also requires an external power source with a voltage of 6 to 9 volts. To obtain accurate results, I recommend using high precision multimeters. Again, it's worth considering that cheap DT830 have a large error when measuring low voltages. But if highly accurate readings aren't crucial, then the good old 830 will do. The measuring wires to which the resistor is connected should preferably have a diameter of 1 mm or more. As short as possible. There is a voltage drop on them, which will affect the final result. The feature of this gadget is its autonomy. However, if you have a lab power supply with current stabilization capability, nothing stops you from setting it to a maximum current of 100 mA and testing any low resistance resistors. Well, now let's test a few resistors. The third circuit is particularly simple, as it consists of just one component. This is a circuit for a hidden wiring detector using a field effect transistor. A hidden wiring detector might be needed once a year. It's not super in demand unless you're an electrician. But it can be useful around the house. It's all simple here. A piece of single core copper wire is soldered to the gate of the field effect transistor with a length of a few centimeters. 
it can be a little longer. The drain and source are directly connected to the multimeter's measurement terminals. It's important not to mix up the transistor leads. Connect them as shown. Set the multimeter to continuity mode. Under the influence of interference on the gate of the switch, the resistance of the transistor's channel will change. When it decreases to a certain value, the continuity test will activate. In this circuit, it is preferable to use so-called low-power JFET transistors. In our case, it is an N-channel. I tried using MOSFETs like the 2N7000. They also worked, but I preferred the first option. The transistor should be chosen with high open channel resistance and the lowest possible activation voltage. Here is a list of the most preferred transistors. It's right in front of you now. And this is how it works. Well, this video is coming to an end. Read it, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to our electronics group. All additional information, including links to my lab equipment, can be found in the description. Well, with that, I say goodbye. As always, this was Cassianoka with you. And until we meet again, bye.